is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Lord. He is alive forevermore. We thank God because of his goodness and his mercies. The Bible says the mercies of the Lord are new every morning, every morning without fail. And that's why we are not consumed. Brethren, it's yet another day that the Lord has given to us that he may speak to us. I welcome you from wherever you are watching us from. We are glad that you are there watching us, ready and expecting the Lord to speak to you. How I desire and pray that you prepare yourself so that God may speak to you this afternoon. Have your Bible ready. Have your pen also. Prepare your heart for such a time as this. The Lord is speaking to his people. And indeed, it is God's will that we, be, uh, we may receive his word, that we may be delivered, we be healed, because God is at work at all times. Our bishop is ready. We are going to pray for him as he comes over to minister his, the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Your faithfulness and mercy endures forever. We honor your name, King of glory. Thank you, Father, for giving us an opportunity to hear your word. As we sit back and listen, may your word accomplish what you have sent it to do in our lives, O God. We thank you for our bishop as he comes over. He is your servant. Use him and bless him. In just name we pray and give thanks. Let us welcome our bishop. Welcome, bishop. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, Pastor. Oh, welcome. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. I'm blessed to know that you are there listening. I've prayed for you, and I know God will use me to minister to you. I know you are receiving me as servant of God. This hour, I have a message. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. We are reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi. May God bless you. We thank God also for the vision. We, we, we announced last time that we are in Bahati, Nairobi. Nairobi, Bahati is a uh, few kilometers from city center as you drive to the east of the city. And God has blessed us also with a powerful vision which now is being fulfilled of 10,000 seater church. Powerful, mega church. It's a vision come true. And we are appealing to all our partners. You have a chance to receive blessings. Last Sunday, uh, last time we had, uh, God spoke to me about it because it's costing us 400 million. It's 340 million and we have money to do some repairs and maybe bank interest because we are acquiring a loan. It will amount to 400 million. And I know God said, God, raise and anoint millionaires. We had so many people last Sunday that we anointed and we know God, they are walking at the open heaven. And we said we also anoint all our friends. Receive the anointing to become a millionaire for God and his work and especially for this vision. You get my number in the screen. You get our contact, even my email. We can talk and it's possible that you partner with us partner with us we can get your contact we reach out to you and even get our bank uh, account and let's team up team up because we want to glorify the lord i know you'll be able to get some reports on the meeting on sunday we it and you see the greatness of god in this vision we welcome you because we feel you've now become partner to this glorious way of blessing. Where God is raising people, not that you are, but he's raising you to be a millionaire for this work, for your life, and his work ever. Before you go to heaven, God will use you powerfully. And he's starting now. Receive this anointing because it's to work through you and to be perfect through you. Now, now, our message today is when Christ is in church, in charge, part three. When Christ is in charge, part three. When Christ is in church, his compassion, drawn from agape love, is experienced. 
agape love is the love that was revealed by Christ on the cross. Romans chapter 5 verse 8, the Bible says, The love of God is revealed from heaven in that Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. That love, unconditional love that God loved us, we never asked for it. We never deserved it, but he loved us to save us. Jesus, when he takes church, he is able now to reach out with his mercies and compassion. If you read Mark chapter 1, verse 41, the Bible says, let's read verse 40. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing be cleansed. I am willing being be cleansed. If you go to John chapter 5, you see how Christ can reach out with his masses. John chapter 5, uh, verse 19, 19, you, you see something else. Mm -hmm. Something else in John chapter 5, uh, verse, uh, no, verse 8. And just say to him, rise up, take your bed, go home. Immediately, the man was made well, took up his bed, walked, and he went home. That's powerful. Now, we want to say this by God's grace. Jesus, wherever he went, and whenever Christ is in church, he will do his work. And one thing you experience is his compassion. His compassion. His compassion. He is so lovely. If you read Mark chapter 8, verse 2, the verse says, I have, comp I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. And if I set them away hugly to their own houses, they'll faint on the way, for some of them have come from far. Christ said, these people must eat. Can you imagine Christ saying that about you? He has compassion on you. You know, he said, these people have followed me for three days. And they have eaten nothing. I, Jesus is so much concerned. He said, whatever happens, according to my level of love and compassion, there's no way I can release them, go home hardly. Do you know, I want to be convinced about his compassion, that there's no way Jesus can just release me to die. He cannot release me to suffer. He said, I can't release them. I cannot release them to go to their houses hardly. Something must be done. And that's when Christ was able to bless the five loaves, the two pieces of, of peace, and, and he was able to feed the 5,000. And I said, they went home strong with the news. We followed Jesus. We were hungry for three days, but he did not let us go home hardly. They also went home saying, we have discovered something about him. He can perform miracle out of his compassion and feed the hugly. We are saying Jesus is so merciful. Jesus is so merciful. And we need to understand that by his grace. He is so merciful. And God will bless you as we comprehend his mercies. It's good to know who Christ is. If you read uh, Mark chapter 6 verse 34. And Jesus, when he came out, saw the great multitude, 
And he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were like sheep. Not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. Do you know this kind of lifestyle? That single mother. languishing in pain. You have children. The, the, the husband disappeared. That, you know, a life whereby when Jesus looks at me and you, he sees you are like a sheep without shepherd. He will not leave you. He has compassion and has his compassion will cause him to reach out and do something about that situation. When you and me, there are situations where we appear to Jesus like sheep with no shepherd. Jesus has compassion even in such conditions. Another thing, when Christ is in church, he responds to faith and releases miracle. He responds to faith. <coughs> if you read the scriptures all over, you will see that. Go to Mark chapter 2, when the Bible says, uh, there are these people who came in, calling a paralytic in, uh, in a mattress. And the Bible says, and when he saw their faith, that is Mark chapter 2 verse 5, when he saw their faith, he said, son, your sins are forgiven you, thee. His father said, son, rise up, take your bed, go home. Yes. When he saw their faith. The same thing you see in Mark chapter 5. The woman who had an issue of blood. Chapter 5 verse 30. Verse 28. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him turned around in the crowd and said who has touched my clothes but his disciples said to him you see the multitude are thronging around you and finally in verse that for he says daughter your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your friction. Hallelujah. That's powerful, friends. When Christ is, a, is in charge, he will respond to your faith and he will speak to that faith. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go. You are delivered from that affliction. It's, it's all over. If you go to Mark, Mark chapter 10, when but miles responded acted by with great faith christ said but miles your faith go your way that is mark 10 verse 52 he said to him go your way your faith has made you well immediately he received his sight and followed jesus on the road jesus you respond your faith that's powerful. Powerful. And I think that when Christ is in church, he will release his program. He will release his demands. He will release his standard. He will release his program and demands. You see, you see, if you read Joshua chapter 1, God appeared to Joshua and said, Now Joshua, arise, because my servant Moses is dead. And God says, when you arise, I'm giving you my program and my demand for this project. When Christ is in charge, he will not just allow you to walk around the way you feel. He is in charge of the mission. He is in charge of that crusade. He is in charge of that church. He is in charge of that family. Follow his directives actively. The Bible says, God said, verse 3, if you read Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, Jesus started giving directions. 
He says, every place that the sorrow of your foot will tread upon, I've given you, as I said to Moses, that is the directives. He wants to give his directives and program. He can't be in charge and just sit back. He is in charge and wants to give his standard, his program, his directives. He said, now, I'm in charge of this journey. And this is what I'm saying. Joshua, rise. Take over. Take these people. Let them cross over Jordan. Let them occupy the land I promised. And this is my methodology, my program. This is my way. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given you. Number two, I'm giving the extent, the boundary. He says, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of Hattites, and to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. God even gives clear definition and boundaries of inheritance. Another thing, God come down. You know, God, you always, I tell people, God, when he's in charge, he will give you four visions. Who he is, who you are to him, what is your mission field, and who are meant to you. Do you know God will not leave you without telling you who are meant to you? Look at now verse 5. Seven. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. He also comes to tell who he is to you. The four visions of calling. Who the, the vision of God's glory. The vision of who you are to him. The vision of your mission field. The vision of who men are to you. That's very important. And he says, verse 6, Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and be courageous. Verse 8, the book of law should not depart from you. Meditate upon it day and night. Why? You make your ways prosperous, and then you will succeed. You, oh, you, you. God even gives you method of success. God says, as you live in this world, I want to give you the way of success and prosperity. So I, I'm saying that by God's grace. When Christ is in charge, he will release his program, his directives, his methodology, his demands. He is in charge of the project. He cannot be in charge and fail to give his own method. That's very important. When Christ is in charge, he calls order and brings hope. He calls order and brings hope. If you read Psalms 46 verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am Lord. If you read Exodus 14, verse 13, God also said, be still, and you will see the salvation of the Lord. When Israel made a lot of noise, they don't know Moses, you took cut from Egypt so that we can die in the wilderness. No, we would have stayed. God said, be still. God, do you call order? God cannot just be in charge if there's no order. People are making noise the way you, they want. If you want to know a church where God is in charge, God calls for order. If you want to know a church council, a church board, church leadership at any level where Christ is in charge, God you call for order. And God you bring hope. And God you call for order. Say, Be still. The, let me say, wherever God is in charge, However administrative or philosophical we are, God will always have us somehow, 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 somewhere. Command us. Can you please be still so that I can make you know? Can you please be still a little bit so that I can show you? That's what you have seen. In Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know. In Exodus 14 verse 13, be still and and you will see. That's very important. When Christ is in church, he, imp 
impart the gifts and they become operational. When Christ is in charge of a church, you make some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors. He also impart healing, some to take care of healing, some with the gift of mercy, some with the gift of administration. Just as it is in the book of Corinthians and Romans, you see Jesus you distribute gift to men when he's in charge. And he makes sure they are operating so that he can perfect the saints and the work of the ministry will continue until we all attain the same faith and the stature of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important. That's very, very, very important. When Christ is in church, he will lead us into the mysteries of the kingdom. In Mark chapter 4 verse 10, when people went back to Jesus to ask him, what did you mean by the parable of the sour? He said, you people, you are given right to know the mystery of the kingdom. Yes, Christ said to the disciples, you are not slaves, you are no longer slaves. Because the slave does not know the things of the master. But you are my friends because I have revealed to you and showed to you all the things my, my father gave me. That's very important. When Jesus is in charge, he produces kingdom life. Kingdom life. Kingdom life. If you read the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3, he says, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight, make, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Why? He wants to introduce his life. Which life? He says, every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill will be brought low. Every crooked place shall be made straight. And rough places will be made smooth. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. He wants to produce kingdom life. Which kingdom life? Where valleys are exalted. Mountain and hills are brought low. Crooked places are made straight. Rough places are made smooth. And the glory of the Lord is revealed and all people see it. God wants to produce kingdom life when he is in charge. When Christ is in charge, he will demand repentance. If you want to know Christ is in church in, in a place, Christ will not just allow people to live the way he want, they want. He will demand repentance. And that's why Christ says in the book of Mark chapter 1 verse 15, Time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus will not fail to cause to command people. Repent. Stop fornicating. How can you have Christ around and you sing very well? But you are still drunkards, drug addicts, fornicators. Jesus, you demand church. You demand repentance. You demand cleansing. Another thing Jesus you do. Jesus will also produce truth. The truth of issues. There are so many issues where lies thrive. Lies. You bring his truth. If you read John chapter 8 verse 42. Mm -hmm, Christ says, if God were your father, you would, you would love me. For I, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come for myself, but he who sent me. Why don't, if, you, if you read this, there was an issue here with uh, Jesus and Pharisees and the surrounding people. And he was, he was bringing the truth. I came for the Father. Jesus, when he comes, he will bring the truth about himself the truth about the kingdom. And that's why in the same chapter, John chapter 8, verse 32, he, he says, that one, he says, 
Then Christ said to those Jews who believed, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus, you bring the truth that you make people free. There's no way Christ will be in charge, and we lack truth to make us free. That's very, very important in just Christ's name. Hallelujah. That's very important, very important. Very, very important. When Christ is in church, you bring his teachings. He can't leave you teach your own things. Or teach things from the world. He will bring his own teachings. Teachings about how do you do a wedding. Teachings about how about marriage. Teachings about heaven. Teachings about life. Teachings about Christ will bring his own teachings. Christ will bring his teachings. Now, when Christ is in church, he will bring what we call Rema word. What is Rema word? Rema word is life-giving word specifically for you that determines your life. Christ says you shall be that word you follow it in your life to, to perfect and perform it. Word, but that's why Christ said in Matthew 4 verse 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus you produce Word that will cause you to live if he takes charge. I tell you, when Jesus takes charge, kingdoms take over. And you realize that is what we call the rule of the kingdom. Jesus, these days people are talking about the grace, grace. No, it's good. But kingdom cannot be there just to be enjoyed. And there's no what we call the rule of the kingdom. He will bring the rule of the kingdom. When Jesus is in church, he empowers people and gives room for faith. When Jesus is in church, he removes fear. He can't allow fear to drive where he is reigning. He always tells you, fear not! Fear not! Fear not! You will never lack that voice around you. Fear not! He'll give you hope. He'll be friendly. He'll be in charge. He'll remove obstacles. And he'll declare that he did to John in Patmos, Patmos, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus said when he took over, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. He will declare to you, as in John, Revelation chapter 1, verse 11, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He will declare to you, in verse 17, do not be afraid, I'm the first and the last. Verse 18, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys to Hades and death. When Christ is in charge, he will remove fear and give us hope, assurance, and he'll be so friendly to us. Jesus will also be a great friend. He is so friendly. Jesus wants you to become a friend so that he can tell you the secrets of the kingdom. Father, Jesus now, take charge of my heart. Take charge of families. Take charge of these young men. Ladies and young men, take charge of that single mother. Take charge of that business. Take charge. Let your identity and kingdom now be seen. Father, we love you. In Christ we pray.